Welcome back to the channel. My name is David Ramos and in today's video we're going to go through how to create a mini course or how to create a course very very quickly and get it out and ready to sell into the world. Now the mechanics of building a mini course is actually very easy and the tool I'm going to use to show you how to do that is Kajabi. So let me go ahead and jump over there. Once you're in Kajabi all you would have to do is go log in, go to the all products under products and then in the upper right hand corner click new product and that's going to take you to the page with a bunch of different templates and then scroll down a little bit and you're going to see the very first one here is mini course so i'm going to show you inside that after i talk a little bit about why you should even build a mini course in the first place so that you can see if that's actually something you want to do and how that could help you create a business online business very quickly so let's take a few minutes to talk about why you should even create a mini course in the first place. So here are a few ways I've used smaller courses, ones that I've built very quickly to kind of catapult me forward in the different areas I was trying to build online. So first of all, a mini course is a great attractive lead magnet. In the early days of the internet, you know, just giving people a free PDF to download was enough to get their attention. But now people want more, they expect more, especially if you are trying to lead them into convince them of your value, what you're creating, kind of get them hooked on who you are, you're going to need to do a little bit more work than just creating a quick one page PDF. And a mini course is a very attractive way to do that because first of all, courses come with a higher price tag and a higher value proposition usually. So if you can offer people a free course as a way just to onboard them into who you are and what you offer, that is a great way to differentiate yourself from the other people in your same market. Number two is that you can grow your small course into a larger course. You can iterate on it, you can add modules, get feedback and create it into something much bigger, but you don't have to start with that. And that's one thing we'll talk about as we go through this training is that mini courses are a great option just to get started with in a quick way, which leads us into the third point, which is that mini courses allow you to kind of break that mental hurdle that a course needs to be very expensive and very in depth to build. When you can build a mini course, you can get it done usually in a couple days, even within an afternoon, depending on the topic and depending what kind of course it is. Finally, mini courses allow you to kind of pivot and experiment in areas you might not be as familiar with, which is a great way to kind of test your target audience, see what they're actually responding to without investing months of work or thousands of dollars. It's a quick way to get some solid answers on what people will engage with. All right, and the last piece I wanna talk about before we jump into the how of mini courses are the pros and cons. As we already talked about, mini courses offer faster creation. It's a great way to offer people a quick win you get to put yourself as an expert or as a voice in a new field when you might not already be well known in. And finally, it's an easy and attractive way for people to find your brand and get involved. All of those are solid pros on why mini course might be right for you. Next are a few cons I want you to consider. First of all, you're likely going to make less revenue because mini courses are typically priced lower than full courses. So if you're thinking of creating a mini course as kind of a pillar product for your brand, I would probably I'll advise you against it because mini courses are meant to play kind of on the edges of what you're building, not as the centerfold. One interesting thing to note is that depending on the type of mini course you're creating, the workload could be similar to a larger project. So if you're considering where to invest your time in, if you're looking at a mini course that's going to take you one to two months to create, I would probably advise you against that also because you want a mini course to get you answers very quickly you know, within a week or two max. It shouldn't have to take you an entire quarter to create it. And finally, the last con is that a mini course is still a course. So it requires marketing, it requires backend support, it requires you to enroll people, to get those systems up and running, and then to respond accordingly. This is one of the reasons people love courses is because it offers them really in-depth material and an opportunity to talk to the creator usually, but on the reverse side, that's also why it requires more work on those who create them. So some things to keep in mind as we go ahead and jump into how to actually create a mini course. Step number one is to choose a single, simple, actionable topic. The whole idea here is that you want to offer people a quick win. So when you're thinking about what people will take away from your course, think about phrasing it like, by the end of this 45 minute course, you will be able to blank or you will have a blank. You wanna make it crystal clear for the customers what they're gonna be able to take away after engaging with your mini course. Let me go ahead and show you two quick examples of what I mean. On the screen here, you're seeing inside my course called Write Your Book, 
which in it I have five different steps which take people from just a simple idea of what they might want their book to be to actually having a published book on Amazon. Now when I was first starting this, I actually began only with the clarifying your idea as a mini course to get people interested in what this could do for them. So when I click in that specific module, this is what the mini course used to consist of. All it was, was helping people go from a vague idea of what their book could be to at the very end, they had a clear, concise sentence that defined what their book was, who it was for, and how and why it was needed in the market right now. This clarity piece lays the foundation for everything which comes after, such as outlining your book, actually writing your book, and then doing the marketing and so on. So I knew that if people could get this piece, it would be a great pivot point for them to continue into my brand and so on. Another great example of a mini course, or at least something that's a little bit smaller and more focused, is the Perfect Proposal course by The Future. As you can see, it's priced a little bit less than the other courses on this page and that's because it's not focused on some grand art topics or on the whole freelancer profession. It's narrowed in on just that proposal part of being a freelancer and how to get that right. By the way, The Future is an excellent course creator, so I would definitely recommend you go check out. I have a link below. Just see how they shape their courses, how they bundle them, how they price them. I think if you're in the field of creating courses, they are a great resource to study and model after. The next step I want you to be conscious of is narrow down who this mini course is actually for or dial in your who. One good question to ask during this time is what kind of person stands to benefit most from getting this skill or item? A few more questions you might want to consider when trying to narrow down that who figure is have you ever bought a course like this? If so, why? And if not, who has? What kind of person is going to spend money on this course or would be so interested that they would spend money but you're offering it for free? Question two is what problem are you solving? And this is a cool little sidestep question. How else do people solve this problem currently? Because if you can show them a better way to solve a problem they're already solving, that could be a really great way to market it. And finally, what will this mini course lead into? So in terms of your brand and your marketing, is this mini course leading into a bigger course, leading into consulting? Where does it fit into your online business? One related resource I definitely recommend for narrowing down your who is this article by Neil Patel called How to Create and Reinforce Your Buyer Personas. This is, like a lot of his articles, very long, very in-depth, and I definitely recommend you read through it because he has some great gold nuggets in here that are going to help you really identify and avoid some of the common mistakes when you're figuring out who your initial customers are. All right, and step number three is to jump right in and create your initial course. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this, a lot of different templates you could follow. One that I personally really enjoy is the Wiggins Theory of Backwards Design. I know most people outside of the instructional design world have probably never heard that term or theory before, but basically it breaks down into three different pieces, the results, the evidence, and the plan. The results phase is thinking about what do you want your student, your customer, to be able to do to accomplish by the end of your course. Then the evidence piece is how will you know that they can do that? What can you show? What can you have them build? What can you have them do to prove that those results are evident? And finally, plan. So basically, reverse engineer your course to make sure that it provides the evidence and leads to the results that you're looking for. You can get a lot more information, a lot more scientific if you actually jump into his book called Understanding by Design. I have up on the Amazon, I'll have a link below. But really, all you have to do is Google the Wiggins Theory of Backwards Design or Google a summary of this book and you'll get a really good idea of how to kind of reverse engineer what you want to accomplish in your course. And by the way, most people don't do this when they're building online courses. They don't actually think about how people learn or how instruction should be formulated. And that's why a lot of people don't get what they're looking for out of courses. So if you can set yourself apart, especially by giving them a mini course with that much value, you're really gonna set yourself apart. A few more next steps to consider once your initial design is underway is to go ahead and build a beta group. So get at least 10 people enrolled in your course. You can obviously get those 10 people in for free. It's okay if they're family members or friends. It'd be better if they are close to who your ideal customer actually is so they can give you real useful feedback. Not just, hey, this is a good course, but more like, hey, this is where I'm getting stumped or it would be great if you would add 
blank, which leads into my favorite word, which is iterate. So a course is not stagnant. That's the beautiful thing about building things online is that it makes it very easy for you to change and evolve them over time. So if you're running people through that mini course and a lot of people are getting stuck or they seem to have the same question, it's easy for you to go ahead and add in content on the same thing. If they're going through it and they're saying, Hey, this last piece doesn't really help me solve my problem. Go ahead and take it out. A mini course doesn't have to be any certain size. It can be whatever it needs to be in order to accomplish your target result. And finally, don't let your mini course just sit there stagnant. Make sure you're taking the time and the energy to market it and share it. Get people in, get feedback, and then figure out how you can use it better to lead into everything else you want. Now back in Kajabi, let's go ahead and jump into the mini course and see what it actually looks inside. So this is the back end view of a mini course in Kajabi. If you watch my other videos on courses or so on, you're, you're going to be familiar with the layout already. In the center here, we have where the content is laid out. So this would be the main category. And then underneath you can add a post, which would be these individual lessons or subcategory to further break them down. On the right side, you have the name of the product with an image. You have the number of members who are already inside or students who purchased it. And then at the bottom, you have the offer that's associated with it, which again, I have a separate video on offers and funnels. If you want to know more about how those work. Now let's go ahead and click in the first lesson here. So you can see what it actually looks like at the top. You can go ahead and decide what kind of content you're making. This is it going to be video related? Is it going to be assessment related? Or are you just going to have this be a standalone text? piece, which is down here. As you can see, this is very similar to how the blog posts are laid out because there's going to be a similar text experience. If we scroll down, you're going to see a section for automations. And again, those are related to everything else that Kajabi does. So I won't go too in depth here. So I don't make the video too long on the right side. Again, you're going to see visibility, which you can toggle on and off a poster image for that specific lesson downloads that are associated with it. So again, if you're giving people PDF worksheets, so on, this is where you would connect them to this specific lesson. And then finally you can toggle off whether or not comments are available in this section of the course. Now, just a side note, I know a lot of people keep comments off when they're creating their courses, but I found that this is actually one of my favorite parts about using Kajabi is that the members have really good discussions underneath my lessons. And I feel like a lot of my members have actually gotten just as much value out of the comments they're reading as the content because it gives them a different voice explaining and working through what they're seeing. So if you're trying to decide whether or not to toggle them on or off, I would definitely leave them on and see how your audience is using them. So again, this is inside the lesson. So every lesson you have the opportunity to customize what kind of content is being shared, what kind of downloads are available and just the overall look. Now, if we go ahead and jump back, you're going to see that this one has a simple welcome lesson, three individual lessons that feed back into the main content of this mini course and then a simple what's next lesson. I think when you're getting started, this is a great way to lay out your content. Try to think of providing three to five core lessons within your mini course that each help lead people towards the result they're trying to achieve. If we go ahead and preview what this actually looks like, you can see that it says mini course up here. You can start the course. The content is available here. Now, again, we haven't uploaded any pictures. That's why it's all kind of blank and boring over here. You can see a progress bar to show them and then the instructor, which again, I haven't filled out. So it's all very simple. I'd remind you that 100% of what you're seeing is customizable. What I usually do is get rid of the bars on the top and the bottom, make all this very pretty, very easy to use and Kajabi makes that very easy to do. So again, if you haven't watched a lot of my other videos on using Kajabi to actually do that, a lot of the design factors are very easy and they cross over a lot. So I'm not going to go into too much depth on those because I've already done them and I want to help you focus on the actual mini course idea within this video. Now, the last thing I want to bring your attention to related to the mini courses within Kajabi is how to link them to the corresponding funnel or how Kajabi calls them pipelines to help people actually get enrolled in your mini course very quickly. All you would do is go ahead and click on marketing and then new pipeline. And it's going to take you to a page that looks like this, where you can choose how you want to lead people into your mini course. So that OVO letters there that stands for opt in value and offer. And that's just a basic framework that a lot of funnels use online to get people through 
interested in, and then finally purchasing your product. So I wanted to make sure I showed you this page just to remind you how easy it is to link a funnel to your mini course and get people in your system, leading them towards whatever it is you want them to be a part of. So that is a quick overview of a mini course. I can finish up just by showing you the navigation inside what it actually looks like for the customers who will purchase it. As you can see, we haven't uploaded a video or an assessment or a picture. So all this is very simple right now, but as you can see, the people can mark it as complete. They can move from one lesson to the next. You can see the text that you added here. When you add a download, you can choose for it to show up over here usually. And then it's very easy for people to navigate through mark it as complete and continue going through what you've created. Then when they go back to your mini course main page, you can see that the progress bar is updating as they go, giving you check marks. And it's all very user friendly. And as a customer myself of various courses through Kajabi. I just love the progress that it makes you feel like and the community that it makes you be a part of very easily. If you have any additional questions related to mini courses, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'd love to jump in and see if I can find a good answer for you. If you're not using Kajabi yet to build your courses, I'd recommend you jump in the link below. I have a 28 day free trial for you to go ahead, experiment and see if it's the right tool for you. And just want to close with thanking you for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful and I'll talk to you next time.